Tell us about the mouse. What role does this play? By simply using the mouse, the user can move an arrow around on the screen and simply point to English words and point to pictures. So in that video that you just saw, Steve Jobs says that a mouse eliminates a lot of the knowledge that someone needs to know to actually use a computer. And that makes a lot of sense because a mouse is very intuitive to use. You just gotta get the mouse, point where you wanna go, click, and it just works like that. However, using the mouse is very slow. Now, don't get me wrong, using the mouse works great for some things like editing graphics, video editing, maybe I'm playing games on a computer. But for programming, it's just not it. So let me demonstrate this to you using a very common developer workflow that I use all the time. Let's say I'm coding on one side of the screen and I have documentation on the other side of the screen. And what I wanna do is go from my code to somewhere in the documentation, click on that, go back to my code and continue coding. So if I was doing this using the mouse, this is what it would look like. So first I actually have to find the mouse. So that means that I either have to feel around my desk for the mouse or even take my eyes off the screen to actually find the mouse. And then I have to look back up at the screen to orient myself to see where that cursor actually is. Use that cursor to point to the thing I wanna to go to, click on that and then use that cursor to go back to my code, click on that. And then I have to go ahead and put my hands back on the keyboard. So I realized that talking about it like this makes it seem dramatically slower than that actually is. So this is what it looks like in real time. Now this is what it looks like if I don't use the mouse. So I know this example isn't super scientific, but it's not meant to be. What I want to know is how when I was using my mouse, I took my eyes off the screen to find my mouse. And then more importantly, I took my hands off my keyboard. Whereas if I'm using the mouse, I never had to leave my side off the screen. But more importantly, I never took my hands off my keyboard whatsoever, which means it makes it a lot easier to go back to what I was doing before. So I realized that if you're not used to this kind of workflow, it might seem kind of ridiculous to say, okay, well, I saved myself two seconds here just by not using the mouse. But the reality is that when you're on a computer for eight plus hours a day working on the computer, these micro saves from not reaching over to your mouse become minutes or even hours of productive work that you can actually do. Okay, so I wanna show you how my development environment is actually set up so that I can achieve this kind of workflow. So to start off, let's look at my text editor, the application that I probably spend the majority of my time in. For this, I use an application called Vim. Vim is a text editor that very literally lets you communicate with it using a series of key shortcuts and commands. This allows you to do some very intricate text editing without ever using the mouse. So in this program, I'm very simply just adding two integers in a function and returning the results. And let's say I wanna go ahead and change the numbers and in the input for the function. So in a mouse driven environment, the way I would do that is get my mouse, highlight what I wanna go ahead and change, delete it, and then just put in my new numbers. So using Vim on the other hand, what I can do is use a series of keyboard shortcuts to jump over to that specific line, then use another series of keyboard shortcuts to change the inside very quickly. I realized that this example is very simple, but the key thing to notice here is how I never took my hands off the keyboard the entire time. Now, I will say this, Vim is not a text editor that I can just pick up overnight. It might take you a few weeks and even a few months to actually learn how to use it. I've been using it for a few years now and I still don't know everything that you can do with it. And I'm always learning new keyboard shortcuts and new commands to use. But it, wow, it's really learned worth using it because once you learn how to use it, your workflow just becomes super productive. The next application that I use very frequently is a web browser to browse documentation. Now for that, I usually use Firefox, but recently I've been looking into Brave and on Brave, I'm using an extension called Vimium. Vimium is an extension for your browser that lets you use Vim-like keyboard shortcuts in your browser to navigate everything. For example, one of those keyboard shortcuts is the F key. By pressing the F key on my keyboard, I can see hints of clickable elements on any page, which means to click them, I can just type in the hint and quickly navigate around any page. As a side note, Vimium is also available on Firefox and other browsers. To tie everything together, I'm using i3 as my window manager. i3 is a tiling window manager on Linux that lets you maximize the space that you use on your screen by using the maximum amount of space every single time you open up a new application. This is in comparison to traditional floating window managers where you can move windows around using your mouse and even stack them up on top of each other. Now there's nothing wrong with floating window managers, they work great. The problem is that using a window manager to actually organize my screens like that, I have to reach over for a mouse and do so that way. Whereas on the i3, as you can imagine, I can organize all my windows directly from my mouse using keyboard shortcuts. 
shortcuts. As an added benefit, tiling window managers follow this trend of being very customizable, which means that you can add key bindings for just about anything that you want and make the experience really your own. It should be mentioned that i3 is Linux specific, but if you're using another operating system, there are alternatives. For example, on Mac OS, you have Yabai, which is a very popular option. And on Windows, you have Como Debbie, which is also a very popular option. So as awesome as this setup is, every once in a while, I do come across a scenario where I have to use my mouse. But for that, I have a little trick. My keyboard is a custom open source keyboard called the Lily 58 Pro, and it uses a custom firmware called ZMK. ZMK allows me to have extra functionality that an off the shelf keyboard wouldn't have. One of those functionalities is actually using my keyboard as a mouse. I'm able to do this by pressing the escape key on my keyboard and then using Vim like navigation keys to do anything from moving the mouse, even scrolling up and down, and then using my thumb keys for left and right clicks. If you don't have a custom firmware, something I've been looking into recently is an application called Warped. Warped is an open source application that lets you move around your screen using your keyboard like you would with a mouse. It does so by giving you hints, a lot like Vimeo does, and also using a grid system that lets you move the mouse around by making the grid smaller and smaller every single time until you get to the point that you want to click to. So I know this is probably a lot of new software, maybe things that you might not be familiar with using. So if there's anything that you want me to go more into depth in, let me know in the comments below. With that said, I will say that this development workflow works very well for me. I code pretty much daily. And for the past year, I haven't used my mouse whatsoever, yet I've probably been the most productive that I ever have been without using my mouse. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything from it, consider subscribing and I'll see you next time. Peace.